Right, so if you've been following the uh, solar, pa solar panel blog I've been running pretty much in parallel with this, uh, you'll know that we just got our solar panels installed and we have about uh, 6 uh, kilowatts worth of them. Uh, we have some production data here, everything's working fine and that means that we've reached a very critical point because all my big batteries in the basement have not been tested thoroughly uh, ever since I got them because I do not have a good means of charging them. I don't want to charge them from grid because that's like uh, well over 10 euros worth of electricity but with the solar panels I'll get to charge them for free. And that means that we can figure out how much capacity we actually have. Uh, since our batteries are 10 years old, that's really a big question mark. Uh, so I've been messing around a bit with the uh, software for the inverter. And uh, we can get quite a bit of useful data out of it. In fact, we can get uh, enough good data out of it uh, to use it as a dummy load. Because uh, as long as a piece is hooked up and running, uh, it uh, can log every second what's happening. And we can read that data out uh, using the internal software and even export it quite easily. So if we, for instance, uh, choose to log with AC output power and the, I think the battery voltage and battery current are pre-selected. Charging current, yep. Yeah. So if we just... Uh, read that out, you can see we have a shit ton of data points, uh, I think it right now should be logging once every minute to disk on the PC that's uh, sitting down there in the basement. Uh, so we have battery voltage, we have a battery current, so that's all we need in order to use some math magic later on to figure out our uh, battery capacity. Uh, and uh, really, I want to get this uh, over with as soon as possible before we really commission the system. So, uh, let's head downstairs right now, since we know the logging is working, and uh, see what we can do. Alright, welcome to the power plant. So, uh, the plan right now is to turn off all the solar charging. We're going to be cutting the solar panel uh, disconnect on the bottom of the MPP inverter we're going to cut the solar panels from the Morningstar controller because we can't be charging the batteries while we're testing them uh, then we're going to get rid of one of the batteries I guess we'll start with uh, number one which is gonna be this guy's gonna be the first to get tested so we'll flick off battery number two and uh, then we'll just uh, run the entire house on battery and uh, log the data and see what we get uh, it's not a super accurate way of testing because the load is going to vary uh, depending on what I'm doing, if the heat pump's running, etc. But we can figure out the total amount of power we draw out of the batteries during pretty normal use. Uh, and that's the best we can do since these batteries are just so bloody big uh, trying to do some controlled, uh, really controlled power. A capacity test would uh, basically mean I have to uh, get out of the house and run a super controlled load for ages like <laughs> leaving a hot water tap running and running this thing 24-7 I'm just not gonna do that uh, so yeah there should be very little uh, solar power being generated right now uh, 300 watts so that's like half an amp it's still a fair amount of uh, current to break uh, with the is isolation switch but I think it can uh, survive it. Yes, yeah, so let's just. Uh, uh, this is scary, but let's kill this. There we go. No solar panel going anymore. And uh, let's also kill that. So now we have no solar. Kill battery 2. So, uh, oh yeah, we also need to kill grid. So now we are load testing this battery and uh, as long as that stupid tablet doesn't die again uh, we're going to be logging data uh, for quite a while and uh, yeah I am very very curious to see how much capacity we have in these 
if there are any uneven cells, if there's anything wonky going on at all. Alright, I just turned on the oven to make me some dinner and uh, it uh, occurred to me to keep an eye on the current because uh, this thing actually lies. So it's right now saying 74 amps, uh, but in reality uh, it's a drawing 79. Um, that's because it, uh, the current meter seems to be uh, just ignoring like some internal losses from the uh, 48 volt uh, boost converter. It, it's always a few amps off uh, in its own favor. So I need to keep an eye on that. We're usually like three or four amps uh, more heavily loaded than the logs, I'm gonna say. All right, so we're a bit into the capacitor test and uh, I have made a few changes to uh, the testing setup. Uh, most notably I've gone to uh, off-grid with backup mode in order to have the grid connected uh, because uh, of course you can set this inverter to discharge the battery even though uh, the grid is present uh, and I just uh, changed the, uh, the cut of voltage on the grid uh, when the grid is available to 44 volts which is uh, 1.83 volts per cell which is a pretty deep discharge but not a super deep discharge and uh, this saves me having to keep a, a super tight eye on this forever uh, and uh, <clears throat> risk having a power outage if uh, the batteries uh, run flat uh, and I don't want to do that. Uh, so in this mode I it's I, I haven't done this before but I'm assuming it's going to run until the battery reaches 44 volts then it's uh, just going to click the battery discharge off and uh, uh, go back to grid power. Uh, running as a UPS with empty batteries uh, and uh, I've also <laughs> uh, gone around and uh, turned on all the lights in the house and the barn and everything because uh, when I was just running you can see I was discharging it like 14 amps uh, and that's because it's drawing a pretty constant 400 watts from the grid when it is in off-grid mode with backup and that's uh, in order to load down the power grid so it doesn't accidentally feed power from the battery into the power grid because it's very important that it never ever does that in order to uh, comply with safety standards. So there always has to be a draw from the grid going to the load and it just uh, adds everything over 400 watts basically. So with all the lights on and everything set up we're running a pretty stable uh, 39 40 amps uh, I've also gone downstairs and turned the heat pump off because that's a very intermittent 4 kilowatt load and I don't like intermittent loads. I still have stuff like the oven and the microwave that uh, I might use still during this test uh, but uh, those aren't uh, reoccurring. Uh, the pump will go on every now and again drawing its 4 kilowatts and uh, since this logging functionality is quite poor for the application of a capacity test, we can't log anything faster than every 30 seconds. Uh, every time the pump turns on and off, we have a transient that kind of gets lost uh, between the logs because there's no smart averaging or anything. It just takes a snapshot of the data every 30 seconds and saves that. So in theory, if we had a super big load that came off for 10 seconds once every 30 seconds, we would never ever see that because the load would be off when it's grabbing the data. So the more uh, stable your loads are, the better. So I'm going to try and just keep all the lights on. Uh, that's like almost a kilowatt of lights running everywhere. Keep my computers running. Keep everything just running on a stable level. And hopefully we can maintain this uh, rather stable 40 amp discharge until the test is over. Uh, so 40 amps for 10 hours is 400 amp hours. I'm expecting to get maybe 600 out of these batteries. Uh, that's uh, my uh, hope and dream. Uh, they're rated 750, so I think it's 600 amp hours for nine-year-old Sun and Shine A600s is a somewhat reasonable expectation. Uh, it should be uh, realistic, and if I get more than that, I'm happy. If I get less than that, you know, I still have 1,200 amp hours, and it's all fine. So yeah, now I'm just going to let this run for quite a while still, because uh, we're sitting at 49.2 uh, uh, volts at the inverted terminals, uh, which uh, does see quite a bit of voltage drop 
at 40 amps uh, so we have lots of battery left problems and sadness that number there in the middle of the screen 379 uh, is our amp hour uh, count for battery number one which is about 50% of its rated capacity which is very disappointing uh, however, there are issues uh, with the test, there are issues to be overcome. Uh, I have no doubt we will be able to improve that, but this is worrying and uh, worthy of our attention. So the way I've calculated this is I've just averaged out, this is the current uh, drain of a battery. I've just averaged this out, uh, all the values, it ended up at 42.4 uh, amps, and uh, then I... Uh, multiplied back by the amount of hours it ran, which was something like uh, 8.96 there. Uh, so that gives us our fi final number. However, there is uh, one particular issue uh, that's making me question this a bit, because the way the inverter works is you set a uh, threshold voltage where it will uh, stop draining of a battery, and I set that to exactly 44 and uh, I managed to get a pretty decent 40 amp uh, consistent draw uh, on the system but then all of a sudden something doubled the draw, draw. I think it was like uh, it was it just before 4 I think it was like the electric car just uh, decided to top up a battery because it's uh, set to be ready to 4 every morning so if it had a self discharge dip percent it would have just gone oh yeah I need a bit extra juice turned on, drew a shit on a current, just doubled the load, and uh, it turned off. Uh, so had this uh, remained at 40 amps, it would have gone, kept going for quite a while, because we were at 46.4 uh, uh, before it happened. So uh, to remedy this, I'm going to modify the testing a bit. Uh, I'm going to disqualify this test. It, it's just not controlled enough. There was too much variation in the load on the system. And also there wasn't quite enough load. Uh, the uh, long, smallest load uh, they specify these batteries for is about 60 amps uh, over a 10 amp uh, peri uh, 10 hour period. Uh, so I think I'm going to put just a, uh, a fan blowing uh, on the outside, 2 kilowatt heater fan. That's going to give us another 40 amps roughly. Uh, maybe try and do some mongering, see if I can get it up to 100 amps uh, to speed the testing up a bit. And uh, we'll do uh, pack number two, because I've, it's been charging over the day, and uh, the batteries seem to be quite full. I connect, reconnected battery number two, and it's drawing basically no current even at the bulk charge stage. So that one's really fully charged. Uh, battery one probably needs another day or so to really fully uh, charge up uh, before we do the next cycle. So I'm just going to rig up and uh, do battery number two. Hopefully, we'll get a more consistent and uh, better result out of that. All right, and I hooked up a couple of extra heaters outside, so we're pushing about uh, almost five kilowatts, around about a hundred amps a load of a battery it should be. So we'll just uh, set this up to let's see, charging source none. Load to price source, uh, PV battery grid, and uh, battery grid. And we will turn this. No, wait, we will apply this. And uh, then we turn the PV off. There's almost no load of a PV, by the way. Uh, it's like 200 watts or so, so we're not ruining the switch by uh, turning it off for that. So now we're going to be seeing, there we go, about 100 amps. So hopefully I can keep uh, this as a bit of a more stable test and uh, above all a quicker test that's not going to take uh, ages and ages. So I'll be awake when things start to go south. Fingers crossed this uh, is going to perform better. Well, if that ain't 100 amps, I don't know what is. Well, it's of course also 
95 amps, but you know, just 5% off, not a big deal. But yeah, we'll leave this running and hopefully we'll have some more reliable figures in a couple of hours. Alright, I've uh, scienced this up quite a bit more uh, because uh, I'm really starting to notice all the issues I had with the cycle I did on battery one here. It really wasn't given a fair trial at all. And let me explain why. Uh, I just went through and measured all the voltage drops in the system on the higher load and uh, since this battery is just so physically large uh, we actually get a fair bit of voltage drop uh, across all uh, the jumper links. Uh, we have about, uh, eight mi nine, about 9 millivolts uh, per link uh, which uh, turns into something like 0.2 volts at uh, 100 amps for the entire pack uh, and uh, if we also add all the wiring brake voltage drops, uh, we actually have uh, almost 0.7 volts of voltage drop just in the wiring. And that's capacity that uh, uh, is still there, uh, but we just can't see it uh, if we cut the test at uh, 44 volts, which is what I did. So, uh, what I've done now is I've calibrated the load you know, to about 112 amps because uh, these batteries have a rating at uh, 112 amps uh, they're supposed to last for five hours so we should uh, be done with this uh, just past midnight uh, if uh, they're in good shape and I've adjusted the cutoff to 43.3 volts uh, to compensate for the voltage drop in uh, this pack it's going to be different for this one but and we'll have to measure that uh, when we uh, redo pack number one uh, but yeah, I, I'm feeling more optimistic now. The fact that we were cutting 0.7 volts too short, uh, that's uh, quite a bit of capacity. Uh, we, 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 like, uh, the specs for these cells, uh, since we're single cells, they are, of course, per cell. So we are discharging not for a pack voltage, we are discharging for a cell voltage. And uh, that's going to be a cell voltage of uh, 1.83 volts. Uh, that's what I'm going for, to avoid super deep discharging. Uh, and, uh, yeah, to really be on top of the game, I should be down here, uh, just measuring all the cells all the time. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, better parameters. Hopefully, we're going to get a more reliable test. And uh, all that science counted for nothing, because battery number two, 220 amp hours. Uh, at 110-ish amps, uh, it should be somewhere around 600, a bit over 6, either 606 or 660. Uh, regardless, we're at like 30% capacity for this bank, which is just uh, completely awful. Uh, the, there's no question about it, these batteries are not in as good nick as I basically took for granted that they were, given the high quality. Uh, however, we're not going to give up yet. Uh, we have uh, uh, revived uh, much uglier batteries in much uh, worse shape to much better specifications in the past. Uh, so I have a decent confidence we're going to be able to get these guys up to very good capacity. Uh, and if uh, these poor abused old things are anything to go by, I am very confident because those guys are very abused and they perform much better than these. And if we have a bit of a closer look at what's happened in here, there's stuff going on. Because I actually went through and measured the voltage of every single cell uh, while these were balanced charging today. Uh, it's quite late in the afternoon now. Uh, these have been charging the entire day. I even turned on grid charging at 100 amps uh, for quite a few hours until they were full. And then they've been charging on off of solar ever since. And uh, we have a bit over 2.4 volts per cell in all of them. I've been charging them very hard. Uh, 2.4 volts is very high for these. It's a balanced charge. Uh, but we still have a few cells per battery, uh, which are lingering at a voltage that's lower than they're supposed to be. And uh, since we have individual cells, we can take advantage of that and just do 
a complete cell by cell, by cell balance charge as you would a lithium battery. And uh, you can really see how uneven they are because these are in the same battery. One is drawing 1.5 amps, the other is drawing 270 milliamps. And I don't think this one, well, we can turn it up a bit, but it kind of starts oscillating with all the other power supplies in there. Maybe a bit more. Uh, and uh, that one's drawing an amp. And I think this guy's been putting out, yeah, 3.8 amps. And uh, 3.8 amps is going into this guy, which is a bit ugly. He's uh, he's uh, got some crust on him. Uh, so hopefully there's no bigger issue with that cell and it's uh, going to revive just fine. Uh, there's a similar situation on this battery of like four or five cells, which are sitting at a lower voltage, even though all the others are uh, perfectly up, it, up to full charge. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this stuff charging now. Uh, it's going to take a day or so to really uh, get these up to balance because we're not charging at very high rates, as you can see. Uh, I might drop them down to a... Uh, well, I will drop them down to a uh, float charge at some point. Probably leave these uh, uh, out of spec cells uh, sitting at a higher vol voltage for a while after I drop them down to a float uh, just to give them a bit of extra oomph to catch up a bit faster than the rest. Uh, and uh, once we've done that, uh, we're going to do another proper cycle test on this guy while I charge this one up uh, to balance it out as well. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm positive. Uh, it's a sick battery, but it's showing symptoms and we have a cure. So fingers crossed we haven't made a giant mistake on this. All right, I couldn't help myself. Uh, we're doing another load test tonight. Uh, I'll let them sit for a couple of hours, sucking up uh, extra voltage, uh, well, extra current, uh, and uh, it, the amount of balancing I've done is not enough to make a difference, real. If it's, we're talking a couple of amp hours at most. Uh, but what I really uh, want to see is uh, if uh, this pack is going to perform better now that it's been cycled once. Uh, because my experience tells me that by just cycling a pack a couple of times, uh, it can make a huge difference in its performance. And since I know we might have weak cells, I'm uh, going to keep a rather stringent watch on the cell voltages uh, to make sure we're not damaging anything. I really, I don't think we reverse charged anything the last time, but uh, it's worth keeping an extra eye on it. And thus far, uh, the so-called weak cells have been pretty good. A uh, 16 was one of the bad ones, and uh, if we probe that. It's uh, 2.01 volts, whereas uh, this, which is one of the good ones, uh, 2.159. They're all at uh, a pretty similar uh, voltage, uh, just around uh, 2.01 volts, all of them. Uh, as I keep probing around, this is a good one, and this was a bad one. Well, that one's actually dropping off a little bit. Uh, but I just started a test, they haven't stabilised yet. Uh, it's going to be quite interesting. Alright, uh, we are a few hours into the test now. Uh, it's been running for almost three hours. Uh, we're averaging something around 115 amps or so. Uh, and that means that we're over 300 amp hours now. Uh, and we still have quite uh, a few volts of uh, drop to go, so it's looking pretty good. Uh, if we have a look at the inverter, uh, you can see we have a uh, red, red 8 voltage of 45 volts. At uh, this current, this is one volt below the actual battery bank voltage because uh, uh, it's measuring that internally after the positive side fuse in, in the inverter, so that's uh, actually one volt of total cable drop uh, between the inverter and the actual cells. And I've been keeping the timer and uh, regularly coming down and actually measuring every single cell uh, to make sure we're not uh, uh, discharging any of them deeper than they should. And 
they have been keeping in excellent balance all of them that's 1.91 uh, 1.914 1 1.917 1.92 there's been maybe 20 millivolts of difference has been the peak difference I've spotted on these and uh, uh, quite happily even the ones that have been bad uh, are performing well so th this is cell number 16 in this pack uh, this was not doing very well before it was uh, not uh, at a high voltage, but as you can see, it's uh, at the same voltage level as the other cells, as is uh, cell 2 and uh, we have cell 6 yeah. over on the other side here, which is uh, historically also keeping a good voltage, 1.93. This is a random good cell, 1.93. So. We are seeing very even voltage levels across the board, which is really what we wanted to see. Uh, at this point, uh, this is pretty much the deepest I've discharged this bank uh, as of yet. Uh, the last cycle, they, you know, we, we got them down to about a bit over 300 amperes, maybe 350 or so, and then something went wrong and the test ended prematurely. Uh, this time it's keeping going because I've tuned everything much better uh, and I really am optimistic uh, we're definitely gonna see at least 400 amperes mark my words uh, probably more than that fingers crossed test is over now and uh, where well, did everything go wrong in the end uh, it seems a voltage sense and this thing is not the most reliable thing in the world because it uh, end of a test at uh, 43.9 volts even though it was set to terminate at uh, 43 uh, there was no transient there couldn't have been at worst for fridge starting which would not have dropped 0.9 volts of a battery uh, but uh, I had to just run around like a chicken without its head uh, taking care of stuff and putting it in inverter mode and forcing it back on to run for a little while uh, that was pretty much in vain because uh, we were very close to our cutoff threshold voltage anyway uh, so uh, during the final minutes of loading my batteries down I wrote all the cell voltages down so the second uh, uh, column there is uh, the uh, ending cell voltages and I was aiming for 1.83 volts per cell uh, that's uh, my goal and uh, as you can see most of the cells ended up pretty close to that some slightly under some slightly over all of them within symmetry specification even the ones which uh, were at a low open voltage uh, which is very surprising uh, uh, the good data is that uh, but all very well matched and they performed considerably better than last time uh, we got uh, less capacity out of them uh, at a lower load uh, I haven't uh, compiled the data yet I'm about to put them on charge they're going to charge you overnight from the grid power's cheap right now and uh, yeah we'll look at the data at some point gosh that was hectic 477 amp hours roughly about 10% tolerance on that given our very coarse measurements but uh, the specification for this current uh, is 560 amp hours that means we tested 85% of the rated capacity on this bank tonight up from 50% one cycle one cycle gave us 35% additional capacity oh thank goodness I am so relieved and I want to go to bed.